when folks talk about the 7.3 and 6.9 IDI, usually the legend of the 1200 horsepower international diesel comes into the conversation. This old diesel has been the subject of multiple forums, talks, and arguments spanning pre-internet, online forums, and Facebook groups in regards to its actual legitimacy. Was it actually built? Was it really too strong for competition, resulting in it being banned? And did it really just disappear like a thief in the night? It's time to dig deep, scour the internet, and find the answers once and for all about this infamous engine. Time to talk about the Hypermax 1200 horsepower IDI diesel. So quickly, housekeeping, what is an IDI? If you would like a complete breakdown of the 6.9 IDI and 7.3 IDI platform, I'll have a link in the description and on screen now to my previous video, the 6.9 IDI is not what you think. Watch that video first to understand this engine platform fully, or keep watching this video and I'll give you a very quick description of what an IDI is. The IDI 6.9 and 7.3 diesel engines are engines made by International Harvester. Later, International Navistar, after they were bought out, it was a medium duty V8 high compression diesel engine made to be fuel efficient while providing a respectable amount of torque for its era. IDI means indirect injection. This simply means that fuel is squirted into a pre-cup instead of directly into the combustion chamber. International made three variants of the IDI for this family. The 6.9 IDI being the oldest, the 7.3 IDI being the middle iteration, and the 7.3 IDI Turbo being the newest in regards to the IDI family. All three of these engines are extremely similar in construction, each one basically becoming a slightly stronger version of its predecessor. The 6.9 IDI being the smallest displacement wise and rotating strength wise. The 7.3 upgrading displacement and overall assembly part size and strength, while the 7.3 IDI turbo have an extra block reinforcements, the strongest rotating assembly, bigger pump injectors, etc. The list could go on and on, but all we need to know for this video are that they are virtually the same engine with lots of interchangeable parts. So now that we quickly know what an IDI is, let's jump right into the 1200 horsepower IDI. Who made the 1200 horsepower IDI and why was it built? In the early 1990s, a fellow by the name of Bill Jans went to the diesel performance company Hypermax with the request to build a diesel truck sled pulling engine. They accepted. This IDI engine was hand built by Max Lagode, who also worked at Hypermax. What were the specs of this engine? This engine had a 15 to 1 compression ratio to handle the high boost. It also was a 7.3 IDI block dry sleeve down to 6.9 IDI spec. Ran compound turbos, which combined provided 147 PSI of boost, had a water methanol kit, ran standard diesel, had a six inch main girdle to help with crank walk under the extreme stress, ran double flex plate bolts with extra holes machined into the crank, as well as an addition of three hardened retaining pins. This helped with the bolt shearing issues and had to use rubber freeze plugs due to block flex. The heads were aggressively ported intake and exhaust side, as well as the pre-cup was modified in shape and depth. The engine sported all of this power with a completely custom P-pump fuel system. This engine made approximately 1200 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 2,500 foot pounds of torque to the crank and approximately 900 horsepower at the wheels. In later years, the sleeve down 7.3 IDI block was replaced with a custom 7.3 IDI block, which was machined 40 over. It was around this time that the Hypermax team started to have aggressive block rigidity issues. So a user who goes by the name of Brad Bitt 
posted completion photos of the infamous 1200 horsepower IDI on the forum Power Stroke Nation back in the year 2008. These photos are straight from Hypermax themselves on July 25th, 1994. Let's take a deep look at them, shall we? So, in the first photo, we can clearly see that this is in fact an IDI diesel engine. We can base this off the valve covers alone or the transmission adapter attachment bolt holes, the overall shape, but that's where the similarities stop compared to a conventional IDI. As you can see, this engine is not only fed, but shadowed by the size of its not one, but two massive turbochargers. These turbos are clearly set up in a compound turbo configuration without the use of an intercooler. Hence the reason why they used water meth injectors used to cool down the combustion temperatures. Let's move on to the next photo. Here is a front view of the Hypermax engine. And just in this photo alone, we can clearly see that this isn't your standard 13 letter IDI. The key parts that jump out to me would be the complete removal and replacement of the stock aluminum intake manifold. This seems to have been replaced by a completely custom tube style intake with larger runners. The intake starts at the back of the engine at the primary turbo's impeller outlet and wraps itself around the engine in the form of a U. This bend of the U being at the front of the engine near the timing cover. Something interesting to note here is the fact that they built the intake like this at all. You would think that they would have went with something much simpler and easier to work with and manufacture. For example, something like R&D's turbo intake manifold. This being a stock aluminum intake manifold with a boost pipe welded onto it. But this is Hypermax, and they are not going to settle for low horsepower and torque numbers that a standard DB2 or DB4 rotary distribution pump can offer for these engines. So they grafted a custom P-pump injection pump in its place with a custom timing gear and housing. This is why they had to build such a wacky intake manifold setup. The P-pump simply would not fit in the stock location with the stock intake manifold. Taking the side profile for a quick look, we can clearly see the junction where the turbo meets the intake manifold, as well as the exhaust manifold setup. Much like most things on this engine, the stock cast iron turn down assemblies have been replaced with custom log style turn up turbo manifolds. Something also interesting to note is the modified valve covers. This left side cover sporting an oil fill due to the custom timing cover. That's where these engines normally get filled up with oil and then either a secondary fill or a fitting for the oil catch can to vent crankcase pressures. This is a fantastic picture that really brings into the scope of what we're seeing here. You can clearly see the custom P-pump, the modified timing cover, a modified water pump outlet, and the elephant in the room, the massive second compound turbo hanging off the side of the engine. Some interesting points of reference I found in this photo are as follows. Number one, they still are using the stock plastic return lines off the injectors. Number two, they chose not to add vent or pressure releases to the passenger valve cover like they did on the driver's side. Number three, being that this engine is coming straight from Hypermax before the truck pulling and drag racing portion of its life, we can clearly see that the heads, at least on this engine, are equipped with standard frost plugs, or commonly referred to as expansion plugs, instead of the rubber variants mentioned earlier due to the block flex. My guess is at this point, the engine, although being tested thoroughly at Hypermax, hasn't seen the stressors and max boost it would later see in its life. Our final engine specific picture is one of the right side, the passenger side. Here we can clearly see just how offset the second turbo is in relation to the back of the engine. This would require a completely custom firewall to fit in the engine bay of any old pickup or vehicle. In summary, what did we learn from these photos? This IDI was sporting not only a boatload of internal work, but external work too. Having hard components such as a custom distribution pump and air intake setup 
making it not only expensive to recreate, but also time consuming. We can only speculate that these are the reasons why this setup was only used as a test bench and never became mainstream offering from Hypermax. Who wouldn't want over a thousand horsepower in their IDI engine? An engine that at its highest performance trim level, the IDI Turbo, could only muster approximately 190 horsepower. This engine was truly a special one-off through and through. So I actually wanted to touch on that just a little bit. My professional <laughs> opinion on the reason why Hypermax even did the 7.3 IDI, the 1200 horsepower variant, was because they wanted to retrofit their eight cylinder custom P-pump. They wanted a test mule for the oncoming power stroke coming in the next couple of years. You gotta remember, the biggest and baddest IDI was the IDI Turbo. 1994 to 1995 and a half was the only years Ford offered it in their F-Series pickups. After that, it was the 7.3 Power Stroke. So what I'm thinking actually went down is they simply used this as an excuse to make sure that their P-Pump setup could offer the horsepower numbers and the torque numbers that the 7.3 crowd is going to want down the road. That's why they only offer it natively on their website for the 7.3 Power Stroke. There is no offerings for the 7.3 IDI, but we know that they built it for that. What happened to this 1200 horsepower Hypermax engine? This engine, as stated, was used originally for truck pulling competitions, but was banned from its class due to outperforming its local competition, making its class non-competitive. Keep in mind, these are the early years of diesel truck sled pulling well before the mainstream. So local class competition was not like it was today. So the owner pulled the power plant from the pull truck and installed it in a drag racing tube chassis F100 known as the diesel. At the drag strip, this combination managed regular low 10 second quarter miles even cracking into the nines on occasion. The block flexing was actually a byproduct of the water methanol injection system for keeping the cylinder temps down. This engine had 16 water meth injectors total, and while attempting to push the engine to new heights, on occasion, the gallons per hour proved to be too high for the cylinders to handle, hydro-locking the engine and causing the block to warp, split, and splinter. The truck was parked up after retiring from drag racing due to the block splitting in half for the third time and was put in an old barn somewhere in Juliet, Illinois. After having lots of bad information for many years, the grandson of Bill Jans, known online as T Jans on oilburners.net, snapped a few pictures of the diesel still sitting in the same barn to this day. Here are some photos gathered of this old truck. So what we can see from this photo is that the compound turbos have clearly been moved to the front of the engine bay. This likely being due to the amount of fabrication work needed to fit the turbochargers in the stock Hypermax location for the F100 chassis. This also could be the fact that this is not the OG Hypermax engine, but the custom board over 7.3 block as previously mentioned. This engine would be sporting an updated turbo setup from years of field knowledge of what worked and what didn't. Something the Hypermax original builders didn't have until the engine had seasons of use. And that is exactly what this engine experienced. Hard use until the engine block once again gave way to the extreme cylinder pressures and suffered catastrophic warping and cracking. As of June 4th, 2022, this is how the legendary power plant sits dormant, still in the same chassis it was last used in, the Da Diesel F100. Apparently, even with a warped and cracked block, the engine could still be started when T. Jans was a youngster, but spewed oil everywhere while running, sealing its fate until someone with the time and money whether that being T. Jans himself or a new potential buyer could bring it back to life again. So that's the legend of the 1200 horsepower IDI. 
there's no drag slips and there's no dyno numbers that I can find. And I've been scouring the internet <laughs> for these fellas. But at the end of the day, it's still a legend. The legend of the 1200 horsepower IDI. You got to think, in the highest trim level, the IDI Turbo, these engines only made about 190 horsepower. You can have a lemon and you can have a little bit better one, but 190 horsepower is pretty much all they were set up for. 1200 horsepower is very much setting the envelope a lot higher than the stock rating for this engine. Now, we can kind of look at it this way. R&D, another company, it specializes in IDI performance. They have stage one, stage two, stage three, rotary injection pumps being the DB2 variety and the DB4. They're pretty much set up for 450, 500 horsepower from your IDI, but they don't push it past that. That's most likely why Hypermax actually went with the eight cylinder P-pump, the hybrid P-pump that they developed for this offering. That way they could really push these horsepower and torque numbers way beyond what that little rotary pump can put out. That's my educated guess at the end of the day. But I'm just one fella. I'm going to get another ideologist <laughs> in here to give his two cents on the matter, his two cents on the 1200 horsepower IDI. Ideologist, eh? That sounds like a fucking $5 word for dumb shit that likes to redline the fuck out of trucks right after cold starting them. What are, are you stunned? So certain things come to mind when, when certain words are brought up, you know? You know, when you uh, hear the word dodge, you automatically think of... I can park here because I'm gay and I'm very, very, very retarded. At least it's out of its misery. When you hear the word Chevy, you automatically think of... That there's my girl. Anyone has sex with my sister, it's gonna be me. <laughs> And when you hear the word liberal voter, you usually think of someone sitting around in their sweatpants, standing around in the welfare lineup, waiting for a fucking blue collar guy to pay the bills. But what you don't think of when you hear the word 7-3 IDI is horsepower. Bingo. So a while ago when I stumbled across the old Hi Ho Stable Garage video on 1200 horse IDI, I automatically thought he was just shitting out of his mouth hole. But then the young peckerhead goes and does all the fucking research and fiddle fucks around and figures out that it's not only is the thing not a Bigfoot, it's uh, sitting in someone's fucking shop right now. I would love to fucking get my hands on that fucking thing and just hose it with the Cosby sauce. But Hi Ho did message me and he said, uh, Peg, what, what is your opinion on a 1200 horse IDI? And so your brain automatically goes to fucking why like why in a sweet fiddler's fuck would a guy take an idi and make 1200 horsepower which ain't known for uh it's known for reliability old slave legs pre-mint it's known for uh you know good torque they're a good torque monster and, and good fuel economy but horsepower is not one thing that the old idi does and does well hell look at that idi that sawed off and i just destroyed there's smoke coming out of the rattles. Already? <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. We didn't even do anything yet. We gave her a little bit of the ketchup, but it just blew a fucking head gaffer right out the side. I mean, it's gonna happen, but a 7.3 IDI ain't known for power. But then, if you watch this video and listen, you gotta turn back the old fucking clock. This is back in the 90s. It was back when men were men and women were women and uh, women didn't have dicks. Like the early 90s before, I think it's the early fucking 90s. Maybe I didn't fucking listen enough, but long story short, big horsepower diesels weren't fucking common. So your natural fucking thought would be, well, back in the day, Everybody had a, a fast as fuck gasser or a, a, or a drag car or some fiddle fuckery that hauled ass down the track. And nine times out of ten, the car hauling ass down the track was a fucking V8. Well, lo and behold, so was a 7.3 IDI. What are you fucking stunned? Maybe they started off with the platform of the V8. You know, they looked at the crank of the 7.3 IDI, looked at the bottom end and all the rotating assembly fucking fiddle fuckery. And they're like, man, we can make a whole pile of horsepower with this piece of shit. And uh, what well, lo and behold, they did. I would love to see the internals of that mill, like the, like the crank, the fucking rods, the pistons, everything. If the inside of that mill is, if there's anything in there that's actually stock, I'm going to be fucking impressed. Because like I said before, the IDI, could, it would spin that fucking crank for years of reliable fucking service. 
you can spray Cosby sauce in them, red line them to the moon when they're fucking cold. But like I said, they just don't make horsepower. So I'd love to see what was going on with like the injection timing, the, the cam timing, all of that shit, just to see how in the sweet fiddler's fuck they're getting 1,200, well, they're forcing it down her throat hole, obviously, but how how they got that bottom end from completely hitting the fucking delete button is, is, is just beyond belief. I, I'd, I'd love to see inside that engine. So after a bunch of shitting out of my mouth hole, I don't actually know. I don't, I don't really have any, the only thing I want to know is more about it. Like, you, you know, this fucking video was awesome. He obviously done his fucking homework, but I want to know more. And I, I want to hear the fucking thing run. I want to see what, I want to know what's in it for fucking part numbers. I want to see all of it now. I mean, you can't play just a tip. Well, when you, you got to play just a tip when all you have is just a tip. But I want to know more about this thing. I want to hear it run. I want to see the part numbers. I, I got to see it. So my final thought, Willard, he's stunned. And I want to see inside that engine. You need to go get it. Is that old IDI closer to you or closer to me? Because, uh, yeah, we need to go get that thing. Fuck, I gotta get this pile of shit out of here. It's given everything, including my dog, even more secondhand electrical problems. Willard. Holy fuck. Well, hi-ho. Appreciate you, uh, inviting me on this fucking vid, you. And, uh, yeah, so this is gonna keep me up at night, you fuck. Keep shitting out your ass. So, that's the legend of the 1200 horsepower IDI. Quite a neat riggin' at the end of the day. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let's spark up a conversation. We know that this engine exists, but did it exist with the horsepower and torque numbers and the fame and glory that's now associated to its name over years and years of whispers and word of mouth? Hard to say. Let me know what you guys think. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one really, really soon. All right, see ya.